This project was sent in by Nora, and she wants to make this head of David into a candle. And since I've never made a candle before, I said, why not? Let's give it a try. Obviously, it's David by Michelangelo di Lodovico Buonarroti Simoni, and the sculpture was originally made in 1501. Michelangelo was 26 years old when he started this thing. That kills me. It just kills me. So, David, we are going to make you into a candle. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. The mold itself should be simple enough. Let's get going. I'm not certain what old David here is made of, and so before I go any further and uh, pour this mold, let's do a little bit of a cure test. So I just put a little dollop of rubber on there, and let's see if it peels off clean. Oh yeah, okay, no issues. So sometimes materials can cause rubber not to cure. That's called cure inhibition, and uh, didn't have it here. We have uh, made sure that the rubber is going to cure, and we are good to go. Time to build a mold case for our Michelangelo David boy. <laughs> and I found this scavenged roll of probably a wire spool of some sort. Uh, it's gonna make a really sturdy mold case, but it's a little too big. I traced it out, and as you can see, there's a little bit too much meat all around it. Too much wasted rubber. Now I could just pour it just like this and it'd be beautiful. No work, but we'd waste a certain amount of rubber. So what I'm thinking of doing, number one, we gotta figure out how tall a cylinder do we need. Seven inches is plenty generous on top. We're gonna pour it from the top. This guy needs to be centered in the middle. And as you can see, it's a little bit big in there, but if we move this like that, so it's closer to the back, we have too much room in the front, but then we can move the thing back. So what we want to do is we want to cut this cardboard cylinder down. Let's take out an inch and see if that's enough. And then the other thing we need to do is we need to mark it to seven inches. Let's cut it to size all the way around. Let's just run that around. And that tells me where to cut. All right, so this is what we're gonna waste out. And this is what we're gonna waste out. We cut the cardboard. Let's see how we did. It's pretty close in there. So yeah, so he's got some nice clearance, not wasting a lot of rubber room around him. It's looking pretty good. So let's see about this piece, this front piece. Slide it into place. Kind of an oval mold. That is going to work like a champion. All right, what do you think, Dave? Think you're gonna be happy in there? <laughs> We're gonna to need to get them waxed and together, and we are gonna be ready to pour this boy. All right, let's get these waxed up. They are ready to fly. Got my handy dandy mini waxer heater tool. Let's just slap a coat of wax on this. You really want to get the wax to soak in because you don't want the resin or the rubber or anything touching a paper or wood or porous surface. What you want it touching is a waxed surface because it won't stick. It won't stick worth a hoot to a waxed surface. We are ready to assemble this mold case. When we pour this mold around this guy, the rubber's gonna rise up like this. And I'm a little bit worried about some of these areas under here catching bubbles. If I just cut up a yogurt cup, beautiful, 
holds him very nicely like that. And we are going to set him up and give him a little pre-paint with rubber. Now I'm really worried about the nostrils, so we're going to start with those. And I'm just going to make sure that those nostrils are full of rubber. So they're not going to catch a bubble under there. No way are they going to catch a bubble. So everywhere I'm a little worried that I'm going to catch bubbles if the, rub if the rubber rises up into these areas, I'm going to pre-fill them. And this pre-fill technique is most useful. I use it all the time when I'm not confident that I'm going to be able to fill a mold without catching bubbles in certain areas. See that hole right there? That is a prime spot to catch a wicked bubble. So let's put, let's push some rubber down in there. I'm being careful not to catch a bubble by pushing the rubber in. A little bit of craft now saves a lot of time later. All right, I'm going to go and finish up and then I'll come back to you and show you the finished paint job. Here he is, all painted up and looking good and ready to go. So I have to wax up this seam. So what we're going to do is take this half round rod. See that? Nice half round rod. And uh, we're going to lay that in here like this. Just lay it on in just like that. Get her down to the end all the way. Seal it in like that. Another piece like this. It needs to be about this long. I'll just pinch that off and put this in here like this. All right, so now got that wax pressed into place. Get out the handy dandy trusty heat gun machinery. <laughs> Let's go. Now the trick here is not just to melt the wax because it'll just pool up. The trick here is to get the cardboard hot so that the wax runs into the cardboard because otherwise the wax will just pool up. See how it's melting in? It's kind of like welding. You got to get the substrate hot. Nice, that just filled that seam up perfectly. Now that the case is made and beautiful watertight waxed up job, we can mount this boy to the base. And to do that, I marked it out so that you can see where he lays in and also you can see where I'm gonna make the cuts. He's gonna be a lot more face on this side of the mold than on this side. So a cut mold doesn't have to be perfectly down the middle. That's another thing that's good about cut molds. They can be all over the place. To stick this boy on, what let's do is fire up the little hot gun and let's just drop a little bit of wax. Drop, drop, drop. I'm gonna call four drops enough of sticky wax. Let's melt those down. Okay, beautiful. That's probably going to be all it's going to take to stick this boy on here good enough. Let's get him positioned up correctly. Okay. Very nice. Oh, yeah. He's going to be stuck on there almighty. I'm, the pencil lines just help me position him up. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to be able to remind myself exactly where I want to start my cuts. And so to do that, I'm just going to make a little mark on the mold. Just take the, my waxer and just lay down a little line of wax, just like that. That's all I'm going to do. And all this is, is a clue. You'll see me when I cut the mold in the next step. You will see me use that little mark, wax mark, as a reference. Those are the little tiny things you do to make your life easy. Okay, now we are ready to mount this boy. So let's drop him on there. And just looking straight down at him, I'll be able to position this case. Something like that will do us. Now, you know what we do. Let's tack this boy down to the base with some sticky wax. Just gonna give it a few tacks. Just to hold it in place, sticky wax is pretty strong, man. Surprisingly strong stuff. Let's just 
just tack it down. The sticky wax is holding it in place. It is going nowhere. To seal it up nice and permanent, let's just go ahead and roll out some worms of uh, oil clay. Roll out the old oil clay and just lay them around the base and away we go. Just like that. Just roll out another worm, same drill, and just seal it up. Just like that. Nice. That is not, no chance that that's going to leak. Let's have some fun. I'd a lot rather have fun than work hard. And uh, so I thought, since this is a big mold and it's going to take a while to fill it, I don't want to work that hard, so I thought I'd make a little funnel for it. And I've made enough funnels in my life to sort of have a feel for it, for the shapes that you need. So let's wax this stuff up. See if this is going to work. I'm not sure how I'm going to go about this, but let's see if this works. I had a theory that I could just paint the wax on if I got the cardboard hot enough. Seems to be working. Quick and easy. All right, now we can attach these pieces to this frame. And for that, what will we use? What we always use, magnificent, beautiful sticky wax. What else would we use after all but sticky wax? Just want to create that seam of sticky wax and then we're going to want to let that cure because we're going to have to put a little pressure on it to bend this other side. This funnel is going to make it possible for me to just dump pour this mold and it's a lot of rubber. So I'm going to like the fact that I can dump pour it. I'm going to be into that. Obviously, this is just a temporary structure. It's just a funnel to guide the rubber pour so that I know that the rubber is just gonna drop perfectly straight down that funnel. All right, time to see if my beautiful funnel is gonna pay for itself. All that time and effort that I invested is gonna pay for itself or whether or not it was basically just a big waste of time. Let us see, oh, look at that funnel. Direct that rubber right down. See, now I don't have to do any work. I just have to dump and it just falls perfectly to the bottom, no worries. Rising up, rising up, just like it's supposed to. And you can see how the rubber follows the contours of the model and pushes the air out above it. We're pretty much done with the need for the funnel. I can now pour all around. I'm gonna cry if I need one more, a little small topper batch. Haha, <laughs> but it looks like I'm gonna. After I scrape this cup, I'll know. But I may be staring at one more little batch, maybe another 100 grams or so. These are the things that happen. Every mold is custom. Every mold is different. Beautiful. Yep, we're gonna need a topper batch. While we're talking about that, let me show you something. Just want to take a minute and show you something. These are rubber chunkies, and you'd say, why don't you use those? Look at them. These were not vacuumed. Look at that rubber. Can you see that? Look at that. Oh my God. Look what happens when you don't vac rubber. You see those teeny weeny, mil millions of teeny weeny little tiny bubbles? That's why I'm not going to put these chunkies in this mold because when I compress this under pressure, all those little bubbles are going to close up and this is going to distort. It's going to compress. It's going to do it enough to warp the casting. Not going to do it. See you later. We don't need the funnel. Funnel has done its job. All we need to do now is just dump. Dump to the top. Excellent. This mold is finito and it's looking good. See all those little, all those bubbles at the top will rise right out of there. No worries. And we I've got a nice, heavy, chunky mold. All right, time to take this mold out of the case. 
let's just start by scraping off the little bit of clay that sealed up the base. That did its job perfecto. No worries. Now I'm just going to run this putty knife around the base just to break the seal. And then all we'll have to deal with is the seal of the rubber as it how hard the rubber is attached to the wooden base but i don't think it's going to be much to pop it okay i think i went all the way around let's see what we can see oh yeah look at that it just falls right off no worries at all there's our boy <laughs> hello still sitting in there looking very happy let's see about these sides now how hard do we have to work to break these I would say uh, not very hard. And once again, sticky wax to the rescue. Just quick and easy, pop those things apart. That's why when people ask me, why don't I use hot melt glue? You just saw why I don't use hot melt glue. If I had hot melt glued that cardboard together, it would really have been hard to pour it, pull it apart because hot melt glue sticks almighty and it's strong. Whereas sticky wax sticks, but it's pretty weak, frankly. But it's but it holds strong enough to keep a mold case together, even a mold case of this size. I always like to trim before I start to think about cutting. I like to trim the little bits of flash, make my molds neat and sweet. Cool, we are ready to go. Now you can see the little marks that I made right there and right there. That tells you where I'm going to begin my cuts. So we know he's looking out in this direction and he's mostly going to be cut. It's kind of a two thirds, one third cut. It's not an even cut because I want to hide the parting lines where they're going to be inconspicuous. There's going to be plenty of flex in this rubber. You'll see it to release this candle out of here. No time like the present. Let's cut this mold open. No reason to fool around anymore. Let's just see what happens. I'm going to cut right in here. Cut my little mountain ranges, my jaggy little mountain range. Cut nice and straight at the model. You want to make the shortest possible parting line, the cleanest possible parting line at the model. And then cut jagged away. And now I'm into the hair. Obviously, I want to cut as little as I can. The le less I can cut, the happier I am. And still release the part. I'm gonna. It's a candle, so I, it's not resin. We don't. We can, we might have to open the mold further than I would like to release the softer material from the mold. But we will see. Cutting right down, no worries at all. Okay, yeah, it's gonna work. It's gonna be good. We're ready to pour some wax and make a candle. So I got the uh, wax melting down in there. Very nice, it's melting up nicely. So I've got the wick mounted in the mold and it's just uh, basically uh, stuck in the cut line. Ready to pour a candle and let's tuck the wick. So let's get some bandage on this boy. I'm just pushing on the parting lines, making sure that they absolutely disappear. You want them to just fall together just as neat as you can. If the parting lines are basically invisible on the outside, then you have a decent chance of having them be invisible on the inside. If they're out of whack on the outside, you're dead. You know you're going to have parting lines that are out of whack. So you just keep putting on bandage. And it's a lot better to use a lot of bands, a lot of light bands, than it is to use big heavy bands. See how that just closed up there? It's just perfect. It's perfect on this side. Let's get these things to just close up. You take a little bit of time putting the parting lines together nice and tight. Boy, I tell you, it makes a big difference in the casting. Okay, 
That looks good. Now, next step is Nora provided me with these handy dandy supports that you use to position the wick. And I suspect that this is like candle makers, official candle maker type supplies. I'm going to use this thing, this piece, this bridge piece upside down. I, th I think that it probably fits in on upside down the other way on round molds. I'm not going to bother with that because I don't have a round mold. So I'm just going to clip the wick up in here like this, nice and tight. So the wick is straight. And then it's just simply a matter of getting up above it and looking down and making sure that everything is nice and straight. Just rotate it around, get it in there straight. Looks pretty good. Looks like it's dropping down there really nice. All right, we are ready to pour. And now all we have to do is finish melting the wax. And once the wax is finished, we'll start the pour. All right, quick check of the thermometer here. And let's see, make sure we're nice and hot. See where we're at. We want to be around 160. 165 right in there coming up to 150 crossing 160 okay we are definitely definitely hot enough so we're gonna get ready to go my plan of action is is to pour into this because I feel like I'm gonna have a lot more control I want to keep everything as hot as I toward the hot end of the range uh, that way if I lose heat during the pour it's okay Let's see how tremendous a mess I'm going to make. See, I didn't think I could pour it out of this crock pot effectively. I thought I would have more control pouring it like this. And I do have more. I still don't have perfect control. I want to pour from the bottom up. Wait, oh boy. I don't know how she calculated the wax. Hey, Nora. How did you calculate the wax that perfectly? That's amazing. We had exactly, exactly the right amount of wax. First time I've ever poured a wax candle. Didn't make too hideous a mess. <laughs> I lost a little bit of wax along the way, but not bad. Now this is gonna take some time to cool. So we are going to put the whole thing away, turn off the crock pot, crock pot did its job. I was thinking, wow, how am I going to get all the wax out of the crock pot? There's nothing in there. Okay, wow, that was fun. It's always fun to do something you've never done before with the uh, high potential of uh, having a, learning, a good learning experience, which is the same thing as a massive failure. See how that wax is cooling against the side of the mold? That's pretty cool. All right, we're going to let this thing sit, and we'll be demolding tomorrow. All right, it has been 24 hours since we cooked this thing since we potted it we are ready to go let me grab a clever little tool a little flush trimmer let's trim this wick off okay all right what do you think i think we're gonna win we're gonna know no soon enough there was some shrink in the wax a little bit of shrink see that Yep, got some shrinkage. And oh man, let's see. See if this thing is one big giant bubble or if it cast okay or what the story is. No idea what we're going to get. Oh yeah, well, I think we've got some bubbles already, I see. But they're not deadly, but some. I did not pressure cast this, I just did it. Oh, natural. Let's take a look. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, there's some voids right here. Let's see. There's definitely a void right there. I don't know if you can even see it. It's not deadly. I'm gonna play with it. See if you yeah, there's a void there. So I caught a, a couple of bubbles. Surprising they would fell. Well, let's see. No, it's not that surprising. I caught bubbles on the up on some of the up surfaces. Let's trim the wick. Okay, oops. 
Trim the wick. A little bit of wax leaked out of the wick, but not bad. All right, not a disaster for my first attempt at uh, wax casting. <laughs> not bad, but uh, not perfect. I'm gonna rate it as officially not perfect. I've got just enough chippage, little chips of wax. I'm gonna break out my waxer, and see if I can't fix some of these little bubbles. All right, definitely learned something on this casting. This is not a perfect casting. Uh, but it's my first casting, my first uh, wax candle casting ever. And I'd say it taught me some lessons. Let's see if we can fix some of these little bubbles with my waxer. So let's see what happens. Pick up some wax. I can't even find the damn bubble. Here it is. I'm just going to melt that into place. Okay. All right, so I melted that in there. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that's not bad. I wouldn't say the repair is invisible, but it's not bad. Obviously, it's bad, it's bad to catch bubbles in any case, and it would be better to not catch bubbles. But this is what this is all about. It's just about learning, about exploring, about finding out. As the wax rose up, it caught bubbles in the high spots. It's exactly where you expect them to catch bubbles. You're always going to catch bubbles in the high spots because the, the material, in this case the wax, the casting material, is always going to push air up towards the high spots. Okay, so my conclusion with that experiment is, yes, you can fix bubbles with a waxer. And yes, they're hard to find. You'd have to look for them. Uh, but the last thing you want to do is be patching bubbles on a casting. You want to make a bubble-free casting the first time. Overall, I'm going to give this casting a solid B. Eh, maybe, maybe a B minus. Uh, it's far from perfect, but it's not bad. And by the way, the cut parting line is non-existent. There's just is no parting line on this at all. Just none. The worst flaws that I caught was there was consider I filled it. I filled the mold to the top and there was considerable shrinkage to demolded the candle. So this morning before I demolded the candle, I decided to pour a topper batch of wax. So I kind of melted the wax and poured in wax. And what happened was it did fill this in but it also ran along the sides, ran down the sides. That's why I caught this wicked bubble. That wasn't there. Also why I got this funky edge and this funky edge. So that extra pour was not a success. One thing I'll say for sure about wax, uh, <laughs> it's not a very good casting material. Look at the amount of shrink uh, between those two objects. Look how much smaller that casting is. And also more importantly, look at the loss of detail. Uh, that's just amazing how the shapes change and how much detail shrinks. That's how much wax shrinks when it cools. So um, there you go. Now you know that uh, it's not exactly the most effective casting material. Well, gentlemen, this project is finished. If you like this video, hit the like button. It's the best thing you can do to help the channel. Thanks for watching. We will see you next week.